Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day 18. Today we're going to wrap up our training on the referrals applet by showing you how to send and then receive a referral request. Take a look at what that looks like inside the applet. And then I'm going to wrap by showing you how you can actually track referrals from agents that are not with Keller Williams as well. So let's dive into the referrals applet. It is the fifth one down. We've been in this for a couple of days now. You are gonna see that from my demo test account, I did send myself a referral request, right? To join my own referral network. And then I accepted that. So this is our demo account. This is me as an agent. I've actually accepted my own request. Just wanted to show you that you do get a notification. So from the demo account, we sent Marty Miller a network request and he accepted it. And we can even click on view agent and it's gonna bring up my connect profile there of who accepted your referral request. Coming back, the next thing that we want to do is actually send out a referral. So we've got a couple of options here. We can send a referral from our dashboard from the referral network section. So we can find someone that's already in our network and choose to send referral this way. Now I'm gonna walk you through this modal and then I'm gonna show you a slight difference for what it looks like when you're sending a referral to someone who's not yet in your network. The first thing that we can see is obviously who we're gonna send this referral to. What type of referral is it? Is it a buyer, seller, tenant, or landlord referral? What referral fee are we requesting? And this is a slider, so you can see it just slides to the right and left and changes that percentage. How long are we gonna give the agent on the other side to accept or reject this referral before we move on to the next agent? And then some information about the referral itself. So let's say I'm gonna send a referral to Marty for a buyer that's in the 350 to 400K price point. This is just a test. Um, and we would put in the notes section, maybe they're uh, pre-approved, pre-qualified, looking in a specific area, need four bedrooms, three bathrooms, anything that we have specific to that buyer, seller, tenant, or landlord, such that we can better inform the person that's considering accepting the referral request uh, and help them make a better decision as far as that goes. Next up, we're actually gonna select the client that we're referring to Marty. So you can see that we can select a contact that's already in our database, or we can actually create a new contact to send over. Now it's important to note that if you choose to create a new contact, this contact doesn't always get saved into your contacts. So I'd always recommend create the contact before you send the referral and then just select them from the database. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna select a contact. Who should we send over? What about Marge? I think Marge is looking to buy a house in Katy, Texas. So we're gonna send Marty a referral for Miss Marge, a buyer in Katy, Texas. She's moving from Springfield. She's already pre-approved. Uh, she is looking in Katy, Texas. And the phone number did not pull in from the contact record because we don't have a phone number for the contact record. So we would wanna make sure that this gets filled in. You see it's not required per se, but email is required in order to send out the referral. Finally, what's the transaction timeline? How soon are they looking to move? This is <laughs> a little misleading because it's a specific date, but if you know they have to be in the house, maybe no later than December 31st, you could put that in there. Once I click on send, we're gonna see a couple things happen. First of all, we now have, if we do a quick refresh, a referral that has been sent and is in pending status. So if we go to the My Referrals tab, you'll see across the top, we have several categories, seven different categories of referrals. And you can see I've used this account before for some testing. But right now in our pending section, we have one referral that has been sent out. It's been sent to Marty Miller. We asked him 25% referral fee. Here was the price point, the time frame, when we sent it. We've got an activity log here where if we click on the activity log, you can see all the information that we sent over to Marty. And then on the right hand side, we've got the client's information and we've got a notes and updates section. So you can see that we put in, this is just a test. <clears throat> I wanted to show you on the other side, what that looks like as the agent receiving the referral. So now I have transitioned into my actual personal command account. I'm gonna do a quick refresh. 
and I am now on the received side. So you can see inside of my personal command, I just received a referral request. By the way, you're gonna get emails when this happens. So you're gonna get an email when somebody requests that you join their referral network. So you can see this is the email that was sent to me when the demo account asked me to join their network. And then you're gonna get an email when the request comes in. So you have a new referral request. You have received a new referral request. You can click on send details, see details, and it will open up this page. From here, we've got to take action. And we've only got 23 hours and 58 minutes to do so. So we can decide that we want to accept this uh, referral, we want to counter this referral or outright reject this referral. Also, it's always important to click on notes and updates. This is where we're gonna see that note that they put in. So really important that before you make the decision, just double check to see if there's any notes, anything that you should know about. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this referral. And you're gonna see that I can leave a message back to demo MC82, looking forward to working with March. Help if I could spell, right? There we go. And we're gonna accept that referral. So now inside my personal account, I just had the opportunity to create a brand new contact, right? So you can see, congratulations, Marge was added to the contact database. So Marge is already created as a contact. And now I have the opportunity to actually build out the opportunity itself. So if we already know Marge is a buyer, we're gonna change to make sure that it's my actual market center and my team is selected. It's a buyer opportunity. I'm the owner. Who's the client? Well, watch this. Marge wasn't in my database before, but now she is, right? So we can name our opportunity, check with your market center as far as how they want this done. We're gonna get into some training about opportunities later on, but you can see once we fill in all this information, we can now create the opportunity immediately from the request and two things just happened. We created a new contact and we created a brand new opportunity as the recipient of this referral. If we transfer back to our demo account and we do a quick refresh, this is no longer gonna be impending. It is now underneath active. We can see it has been received. And by the way, we can see that Marty already created an opportunity and what pipeline phase that opportunity is in. And every time Marty moves that opportunity, all right, so let's go into my actual opportunity pipeline. This was a buyer-based opportunity for our fake person named Marge. Here she is, Marge Simpson, buyer. We're gonna move her to the appointment phase. And now we can see she's in the appointment phase. Again, we're gonna do some training on opportunities later, but just showing you how this referral applet works and the information you can receive. <clears throat> If we click on active again, we're gonna see Marge and this should update, and this may be a 24 hour update, but eventually this will update to show that the pipeline phase has moved to appointment. We can also send notes back and forth. I can send an update from the demo account to Marty, maybe requesting an update, finding out how things are going. Maybe uh, Marge called me instead of calling Marty and gave me some information. I could send that over and the same thing can happen from the person that receives the referral, they can actually come in and send updates as well. So we can see that we've got the active opportunity or active referral here, and we can go ahead in and choose, sorry, I have a bunch of actual referrals in here, but anyways, we can update that on our side as well. I apologize, There's, there we go, back to this. So. Notes can be sent back and forth. We can click on notes and updates. We can see the information Marty sent back and the fact that he created an opportunity. So a lot of communication can happen. A lot of tracking can happen. You can sort of see how all of your different referrals are going. Lastly, if you wanted to create a referral for someone that sent it to you outside of KW, you do have that ability to track referral. And here you're actually just typing in an agent's name. You're gonna go through the same exact process However, it's just not gonna send that to the actual client. This is more just for your tracking. The other agent isn't going to get this information per se. It's just going to allow you to track the fact that you sent a referral to an agent outside of KW. A little bit long today, guys, but I wanted to make sure you got all the information on creating 
and tracking your referrals both inside and outside of KW and had a full visibility into what it looks like on both the sent side and received side. Guys, tomorrow we will actually dive into opportunities and new applet unless we get a new release, which may happen soon. Stay tuned. Talk to you real soon.